So Fred, that's wonderful how you're stating all this. And keep going on with the aspect of how do you, how does a person, let's say you said they believe in themselves or they believe in information and how you believe in the spiritual belief gives you a clearer mind and coupling that with dedication of an athlete. All of those things everybody has going on in their head, but how do they kind of sift through all of that so they know how to make that clear decision? Where does that come from? From what, from your point of view, your 80 years, where does well, that my, decision come and, from? Well, you know, the, uh, when I say uh, it's, it's perfectly healthy to believe in yourself, but to believe in yourself, I'm, that's not really what I'm talking about. You have to have confidence in yourself that you can achieve your goals. I mean, you can't accomplish anything that's really challenging if you don't believe in yourself. But what I'm talking about is you have, I, my personal belief is that you have to be spiritually grounded. You have to look around at yourself. Like when I go down to the ocean in the morning and I look out on the ocean, I personally, me myself, now other people might not think this is valid, but I definitely feel the presence of God. And you get to the point, it's ridiculous as it might sound to some people, you get to the point when you lead this type of a life, when you eat, when you eat a diet that's a very clean diet, and you don't deviate from that diet, and you keep your system clean, and everything's working well in your system, all the plumbing is working well, everything's working well upstairs in the upper apartment, in the, what happens, you'll find that you don't age the way people think that we're supposed to age, that you know, normally that it's age. And I don't believe that you have to take... Uh, a lot of people now today, they're in their 50s and their 60s, and they got, um, you know, they got huge physiques, and they could look, uh, you know, handsome or gorgeous, but they're already into, at that point, they're into HGH, and they're taking testosterone, they take bioidentical uh, hormones, and that's okay if you want to go that way. Science is going to provide a lot of answers that are just going to be amazing, and they're doing it. But... Uh, I, I'd rather see people get the most out of they possibly can. Then, when that happens, then we, we, we take advantage of technology, which is coming to bear with science is coming now, like what's happening with the stem cells. We just, in the last few years, everybody's talking about stem cells and peptides. It's tremendous what you're going to be able to do. But, you know, you might not have to do this, some of this stuff to a very advanced age. You might not have to wait till you're 120 or something like that, or older. I don't know. I don't really know, but the thing is, we don't kick, the point, the point that I'm trying to make is that we have to take it advantage of everything that nature is, is uh, uh, you know, providing for us. There's some brilliant minds out there that are able to understand what's going on in our world scientifically, spiritually, and what happens, we have to take this information and use it for ourselves. But we don't want to take this information and abuse ourselves, count on our, our, what we're doing to abuse ourselves to knowing that this is in, you know, this is waiting for us someplace in some pharmacy or some doctor's office. I think we have some great doctors out there. I also have, I think that, unfortunately, a lot of doctors don't know that much about this type of nutrition. They think if you, a lot of doctors uh, think that if you're not eating animal protein that you're just uh, not going to be a healthy person. And what they're looking at is actually the transition from being uh, a very unhealthy person in their chemistry to transition to being a healthy person, but they think because you lose weight, some people, not everybody, I'm just trying to explore possibilities, that, you, that you're, uh, you're becoming sick. It's not the case at all. Okay. The, 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 the hard part about this type of journey is that you have the faith, the boldness, and the courage beyond, I want to say, human understanding, because people that have a certain type of training, don't, they're not aware of this, as far as I could see. Now, of course, there's more and more, uh, you know, medically trained people are becoming aware of this. I know a number of doctors myself now that are very interested in nutrition, and they're, they're aware that you can, you can truly live on a vegan diet and be healthy. Forget about talking about a raw diet for some people, more and more people are doing it, and then, of course, at the other side of the coin, you have a lot of these uh, purists that talk about raw food, and they talk about, um, you know, you can't, uh, you know, you can't put a pair of sunglasses on, or 
You can't use a little bit of raw agave. Meanwhile, they're probably eating pizza on a, on a Friday night in some beer joint someplace. So I've run into a lot of those people too that are setting standards for other people that they can't live up to themselves.